इंशाला जिहाद चलेगा कोई इसको रोकने वाला नहीं है ये हमारे बेटे हैं इतने क्रेज इतने तेज अल्लाह की कसम बारूद में बंदूक में हमने इनको पाला इनको पढ़ाया इनको सिखाया राहील शरीफ पाकिस्तान का सबक आर्मी चीफ तैतीस अरब मुल्कों की आंखों का तारा बना फिरता है अल्लाह की कसम क्रेडिट गोज को जिहाद Hello everyone. Good evening. I'm Shreya Dhondial. Today on Epicenter at seven, the new terror CEO of Pakistan. We are exposing him right here this evening. And his name is Abdul Rahman Makki, and he is the new boss of the Jamaat ud Dawa. And he is openly talking about how the Pakistani establishment is a puppet in the hands of jihadis. Hello everyone. I'm Maria Shakil. Before we get to that, here are the headlines we are tracking this hour. Pakistan's new terror chief Abdul Rahman Makki caught on camera threatening jihad against Hindu India Hafiz Saeed's brother is brother in law in fact takes over Jamaat ud Dawa after his house arrest The center versus state beef battle spills over to the streets of Chennai and Bengaluru Chief Ministers Mamata Banerjee and Pinarayi Vijayan warn the center not to interfere in state subjects and dictate people's food choices and no lessons learned no action taken bangalore's uh, fatur lake froths again toxic foam envelopes areas in the vicinity Our top story this hour is coming from Pakistan which has got itself a new chief terror officer. His full name is Hafiz Abdul Rahman Maki. He is Hafiz Saeed's brother-in-law. Hafiz Saeed if you remember is the terrorist behind the 2611 Mumbai carnage that left 164 people dead. Mr. Maki's appointment as the new boss of the Jamaat ud Dawa came after Hafiz Saeed sham house arrest some 4 months ago. Pakistan had to do it under much pressure but they have the arrest is absolutely sham but well he is appointed a successor abdul rahman maki is a declared global terrorist by the us he carries a 2 million dollar bounty on his head maki leads terror recruitment for the jamaat ud dawa he also holds rallies across pakistan he is also in a habit of threatening india regularly and spilling the beans on pakistan's civilian and military leadership Now in one such rally on the 16th of May in Bhawalpur it was actually the janaza or funeral in absentia of a slain terrorist Abdul Rahman Maki has effectively claimed that the Pakistani army is a puppet of jihadis So what we are about to play for you now is the first excerpt of an absolutely outrageous speech made by Abdul Rahman Maki Maki is saying openly and brazenly that uh, whatever pakistan is today is because of jihad he is also saying that former army chief rahil sharif who now heads a 33 country alliance of sunni countries is there has got his new job only because of jihad and the fact that he supported jihadis when he was the army chief that effectively means that the former pak army chief was a puppet in the hands of the jihadis listen in to what mr maki is saying करके कहता हूं कसम अल्लाह की और मेरे भाई देख एक तरफ पाकिस्तान में बेचारा हारा हुआ पिटा हुआ चोर डाकू सियासतदान है आज राहील शरीफ पाकिस्तान का सबक आर्मी चीफ तैतीस अरब मुल्कों की आंखों का तारा बना फिरता है अल्लाह की कसम क्रेडिट गोज टू जिहाद 
مقابل امریکہ کی باون ریاستیں آج پاکستان فتح یاد ہے نیٹو کے سینتیس ملکوں کے مقابل ایک جہاد سے دیکھ لو مشرفوں نے کوششیں کی تھی اب تک حالتیں سامنے ہیں اللہ کی قسم جہاد جاری ہے اور جو جہاد کو روکنے آئے تھے وہ دنیا میں دکھائی نہیں دیتے These are the claims that should embarrass the Pakistani establishment. General Raheel Sharif, Pakistan's former army chief, is now heading the military force of 33 Sunni countries. Abdul Rahman Makki, in fact, claims now that this is because of jihad. Then, in a moment of delusion, he says Pakistan is more powerful than NATO's 37 countries only because of jihad. کیا امریکہ کے پاس ایٹم بموں کو پانی پڑ گیا تھا جو افغانستان میں امریکہ کو جھوٹے لگے کیا روس کے ایٹمی بموں پر بارش برس گئی تھی امریکہ کی باون ریاستیں آج پاکستان فتح یاد ہے نیٹو کے سینتیس ملکوں کے مقابل ایک جہاد سے اللہ کی قسم چیلنج کر کے کہتا ہوں تم تیس سال سے اسلام آباد کی بنتی بگڑتی حکومتوں کی دھوپتی لکیا دیکھ لو اور تیس سال سے میرے بھائیوں کی اپنے بیٹوں کی ہیکٹرک ٹروفیاں جنتوں میں غزوات میں شہادتوں میں امریکہ کی شکست میں نیٹو کی شکست میں بھارت کی سلک میں آؤ اللہ کی قسم حساب و کتاب لگا کے دیکھو پاکستان سے روس مدد مانگتا ہے اپنے دستوں کی مشترکہ مشکوں کے لیے دیکھ اللہ کی قسم اور میرے باب البری دیکھ کس طرح پچھلے تیس سالوں میں ان تیرے بھائیوں نے ان بیٹوں نے ان جہاتی خیرت مندوں نے پہلے روس کو ہرایا سوویٹ یونین کی یونین دوڑی انشاءاللہ جہاد چلے گا کوئی اس کو روکنے والا نہیں ہے now let's tell you how these jihadis are in fact brainwashing Pakistani youth to wage a war against India. The strategy is direct. It's to indoctrinate young children to use guns and dynamites. They are the unmatched fighters according to Jamaat Dawa. یہ ہمارے بیٹے ہیں اتنے ٹرین اتنے تیز اللہ کی قسم بارود میں بندوق میں ہم نے ان کو پالا ان کو پڑھایا ان کو سکھایا ان جیسا بندوق چلانے والا ان جیسا جنگ کرنے والا تمہارے ملک میں نہیں ڈبا بدر شیر کے دو ہزار آدمیوں کو سامنے وسیعت خبر ہے معلوم ہے یہ گمنام قاتل نہیں ہے انشاءاللہ جہاد چلے گا کوئی اس کو روکنے والا نہیں ہے انشاءاللہ جہاد چلے گا کوئی بھی اس کو روکنے والا نہیں ہے that means جہاد will never stop it is in our blood Abdul Rahman Maki is making his intent very clear and topping his kill list is Hindus. Just watch this chilling video further. Border, park, and Kajana, Hindu fought the learner. Kisi. اور امن ہندو سے بھی نہیں لڑنا اور کسی پاکستانی مسلمان سے تو سوال ہی پیدا نہیں یہ ہے جی آپ کہ اٹھ کے چار بچے چلے گئے ہیں وہاں جی جا کے ہندو فوج نے شہی اللہ کی قسم یہ منحج ہے یہ مشن ہے اس کے پیچھے ادارہ ہے اس کے پیچھے زین ہے قرآن و حدیث ہے آیات و حدیث ہے اللہ پاک کی وعدے ہیں زمانتے ہیں نبی پاک کی بشارتے ہیں چیلنج کر کے کہتا ہوں تم تیس سال سے اسلام آباد کی بنتی بگڑتی حکومتوں کی دھوکتی لکیا دیکھ لو اور تیس سال سے میرے بھائیوں کی اپنے بیٹوں کی ہیکٹرک ٹروفیاں جنتوں میں غزوات میں شہادتوں میں امریکہ کی شکست میں نیٹو کی شکست میں بھارت کی سلک میں آؤ اللہ کی قسم حساب و کتاب لگا کے دیکھو مجھے بڑی خوشی ہوئی جب مجھے خبر ملی کہ ٹپا بدر شیر میں ابو علی شیراز وہ پیارا سا خوبصورت سا گبرو اٹھتی جوانی 
اللہ کی قسم اس گرم شہر کا وہ بیٹا جا کے برف کشمیر میں دو سال میدان کے اندر بھارتی فوج کی ٹکر پر شیر دلے and reacting to this rather chilling video former pakistan army chief and former president general parvez musharraf has openly backed jamaat ud dawa calling the terror outfit a welfare organization one that is involved in charitable work listen in he says you had to flee from pakistan because of jihadis like him well he's got uh, his own views uh, which i don't accept at all uh, he doesn't seem to be knowing uh, facts and he is very divorced from realities why don't you admit that your state is powerless in front of people like makki they cannot act against jihadis like makki why don't you admit that well maybe instead of saying powerless may i say that they don't want to because they are doing a good job probably in some areas which uh, which favor the government ah they are doing a good job See now the cat is out of the yeah. bag. They are doing a good job because well, you use these proxies, you use these terrorists to to fuel violence in in Kashmir, in Afghanistan, in other parts of the world. No, that is not why. So it's they convenient no, for the state. They are mujahideen. It's convenient for the state. You I just you just said, you just admitted times. it, uh, General Musharraf. You it is convenient okay, for Pakistan. Okay, state. you said your bit. You uh, said uh, your bit. Let okay, me say. Okay. Now, don't keep calling them terrorists because I don't call them terrorists. We call them mujahideen, right? Is that clear? The fact is, here is a man who has a two million dollar bounty on his head. Can abuse? Forget about abusing India. Forget about abusing Kashmir. He's abusing you. He's abusing Rahil Sharif. He is not abusing. Don't exaggerate. He is not abusing. He is giving some views that I left Pakistan because of jihadi pressure. This is not an abuse. But let me remind you that since 9/11, the world has changed. And since 9/11, you too, when you were president of Pakistan, accepted that you need to go after these jihadi factories. Unfortunately, you couldn't. You failed. And so did Rahil Sharif. No, and because so does, I didn't so want to. So does Nawaz Sharif. Do you understand that? I didn't want to. Ah, okay, see, I'm not calling them. I do, don't call them terrorist organizations. You I'm didn't. I'm calling them a mujahideen organization. Aren't you understanding you that? Didn't, so you didn't. You didn't want to because these guys suit your agenda. So why don't you accept that Pakistan uses yes. terrorism yes, as an instrument of policy? Yes, of course. You use terrorism as an instrument of policy. No, no, it is not terrorism. Don't keep calling it terrorism. It suits our agenda. These are mujahideen who are fighting against your army in Kashmir, helping their brethren who you are killing. Interesting, isn't it? Former President of Pakistan Parvez Musharraf refusing to acknowledge the fact that Abdul Rahman Maki is a terrorist, despite the fact that Mr. Maki himself is openly saying that Musharraf was forced to flee Pakistan because of jihadis. Let's quickly take you through what Mr. Maki has said and how most of it is hogwash. We we'll let you judge for yourself. But here are some of the things he has said in this video. We have shown you. First, he says Pakistan is more powerful than 37 NATO countries, all because of jihad. Well. that can only be one thing and that is fiction here he is also saying that russia takes help from pakistan god forbid if that starts happening he is also saying jihadis from bhawalpur have defeated russians and destroyed the soviet union as you and i both know soviet union perfectly intact today rahil sharif heads the islamic military of 33 arab countries only because he supported jihad well mr sharif will have to answer that question is it really because he backed did he get the job only because he backed the jihadis i don't think that's true again he's saying that america was defeated in afghanistan where america has not been defeated in afghanistan uh, they still have a contingent there he also goes on to say that pakistani jihadis defeated america nato and now will destroy india all we can say to that is keep dreaming now the question is why is this man not behind bars pakistan for its own good should be putting this man behind bars let's get in our panel this evening group captain sultan m ali is joining us from islamabad this hour we have major general bakshi uh, uh, bakshi who is joining us from delhi and major general uh, yogi behel he is joining us right here in the studios uh, gentlemen thank you very much for being with us group captain ali good evening to you you're joining us from islamabad and i'm going to start with you by asking what you make of mr makki he is a terrorist 
is he a terrorist according to you or do you like Parvez Musharraf believe that he is a social worker, sir? Well, I am appalled uh, that uh, Mr. Bakhi is uh, allowed to be at large. Yes, I would agree with the United States or international organizations that have dubbed him a terrorist. Mm -hmm. He is a terrorist. Mm -hmm. He should either be put behind bars or he should be muzzled. No, but so but why why is he not behind bars, sir? I mean, this is a tape. This is this is a conversation. This is this is a speech that was given at a janaza two weeks ago. Sixteenth of May is when it is dated. If a media channel, an Indian media channel, has been able to access this video, I'm sure Pakistani authorities have this video as well. The surprising question is, he is not just you know making these empty threats against India and Russia and the US. The fact is he is embarrassing Pakistan as well. Why is he not behind bars? Indeed, that is my question too because you see the National Action Plan of uh, Pakistan which was formulated has uh, very strong articles on uh, articles which uh, uh, promote uh, hate and which promote uh, people towards uh, acts of terrorism. So if such a person is doing it publicly and there is evidence available, I think it should be taken cognizance of and he should be put behind bars. So you, clearly you are saying that uh, Hafiz Saeed's arrest, house arrest is a hogwash or a sham here. Let me get General Jiri Bakshi now. General Bakshi, it clearly looks like business as usual as far as Jamatu Dawa is concerned. Uh, so what really is happening? Do you think that now Jamatu Dawa has perhaps become so big in its actions and its planning that even the army is not able to rein it s further now. You know, uh, uh, there was euphoria in India when uh, the Jamaat Dawa chief was put under house arrest. You know, we went into paroxysm of ecstasy. Oh, at last Pakistan is being forced by the Trump administration to act against the terrorists. It was all hogwash. Hmm. You know, to why do we have to buy the Pakistani narrative that it is not the Pakistani state which is sponsoring the terrorists? You heard General Parvez Musharraf, hmm. the former president of Pakistan, telling you these are his minions. He is, they are going to use them. No, but and what as kind they of good are committed to openly spew you... hate and venom against India. Right. General G. D. Bakshi, good don't you work. Think, I mean, good work is attacking you. Good work is killing Indians. But you know what I find even more embarrassing, and I want you. I mean, let's not be so naive. No, 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 General Bakshi, no one's being naive. What I find even more interesting is the fact that he is saying that General Rahil Sharif got his job heading a military alliance of 33 Arab countries only because he supported jihad. That's more embarrassing for Pakistan. Forget the threats he is giving India. And it tells you something Look, about uh, the way things are done in Pakistan. That, uh, you know, uh, absolutely my, 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 my contention is that Pakistan has been creating a charade hmm. that, you know, it is not in control of these non-state actors. Hmm. Let us not fall for that charade because it is an extension of the ISI's asymmetric warfare arm. And the primary, the, the primary jihadi tanzim which serves the ISI is the Lashkare Taiba uh, stroke, the Elias, the Jamatud Dawa, you know, and whatever other names that they will keep reincarnating right. themselves under. Right. It is the asymmetric warfare arm. Let me this get is the only tanzim which has now. never attacked the Pakistani army. Right. The only point is that they are now trying to show Dutch courage because the Pakistan establishment is a bit worried. The Americans have put a 10 million bounty on Hafiz Saeed's head. They were forced to put him under arrest as a cosmetic exercise. It is a this cosmetic man, exercise, his certainly. Is Let me get General Behel Venom now. General Behel, as normal. You know, for, for, for Parvez Musharraf to say that the work that is being done by Jamatu Dawa is a good work and that they are engaged in charitable work, what kind of humanitarian exercise are they indulging in? And this is the biggest endorsement that can come from a former army chief. See, the point is this, that uh, uh, this uh, uh, Jamatul Dawa 
the social work which they have st started doing in uh, uh, pa uh, Pakistan or working like as an NGO mm -hmm. is a creation basically of the, army. of the army. It's a cover plan. It's basically a camouflage. Mm -hmm. Second thing is whatever the speech was given by uh, this chap, uh, 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 Mr. Mucky. Mr. Mucky, or uh, during that uh, uh, funeral, pr uh, funeral, mm. it was basically, uh, definitely, it was advocated by the ISI, because if you see the history, the chief who has gone out, who has retired, they don't want to show him, uh, don't want to make him a hero now. So therefore, is basically it's all well-planned uh, affair. As but regard, we, as regard, mean, we are concerned. But are they not making him a hero by letting him speak no, the way he is? No, they are not making him a hero. They are actually as regard, the speech is being given to the public. Mm -hmm. It's not meant for us. As regard, he is talking to the public is concerned. He is basically is conveying that the chief has gone there. Mm -hmm. He has been he has been moved out of country. He has made the uh, uh, what you call uh, looking after the 39 countries uh, army. Primarily because of the this organization. Right. That because he supported jihad is why he got uh, got the job. Uh, you know we are running otherwise out of. Otherwise he was nothing. Yeah, we, so, Group so Captain Hali, you're joining us from Islamabad. Uh, I think we have time for a quick last comment. Uh, you know the view is that Mr. Maki is not behind bars because the army doesn't want him behind bars. The fact is the fact is that he has called your prime minister a chore openly. Openly he is calling him a chore. And the view that is coming in is this man is not behind bars simply because the army doesn't want him behind bars. The ISI doesn't want him well, behind bars. Well, I personally don't endorse this particular opinion that the ISI or the army is behind him. If uh, Mr. Maki is calling the prime minister names, okay. uh, it is for the prime minister or the ministry of former interior under army the chief. prime minister. Sir, the former army chief of your country. Parvez Musharraf yes. has called he, called this organization a charitable organization that is involved in good work. So certainly this organization has the army backing. No, you see the, the fact is that besides acts of terrorism, this organization has been engaged in charitable work. It has come to the rescue of people who were stranded in during the earthquake and also during sure, floods and during storms. So that is, just, that is just one side of the story. So, But that does not justify them to carry out acts of terror and uh, I beseech the government of Pakistan hmm. to act and put this person either behind bars okay. or to shut him up. He will okay. never be put behind the bars. He, but he will never be put he behind bars put and behind even if bar. it happens, even it's, if it's a house arrest, it will be a sham house arrest like, like uh, Hafiz Saeed. We Hafiz, leave it, Saeed, has leave put, there, Hafiz Saeed has been put behind the bars for the very simple reason that he was, bring, he was growing out of his shoes huh. for, for Sharif's brother, who is looking after, who is the governor of Punjab. Correct. So therefore, for their own safety, they have put him behind the bars. And there was a bounty on him. Absolutely, there was a, the, the bounty was also there. Mm -hmm. Second thing, what they say, they don't mean. Mm -hmm. Pakistan was saying that they have no knowledge about uh, Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. But if you go back to the Afghanistan war, there was a 24 hours ceasefire mm -hmm. in the middle of the whole, uh, main fight. And that was the battle of Tora Mora was going on. Mm -hmm. And same night, the, 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 when the ceasefire started, or the same night, the information came that a chopper landed at Peshawar. Mm -hmm. There were two chaps came out of the uh, chopper. One was uh, having a long beard, another was in uniform. So they knew. So they knew that, uh, that uh, they knew. Osama bin Laden, uh, Osama bin Laden has been brought to the... Uh, they knew, they know everything. They know everything. They yeah. will not act because Absolutely. it suits them not to act. General Bell, thank you very much for joining us. General Bakshi, thank you very much for joining us. And Wing Commander Hali, thank you very much for joining us from Islamabad this evening. With that, uh, we are slipping into a quick break on the show. But the other big story, Maria, is the face-off that is happening between the centre and the state over the cattle slaughter ban. That and much more when we return. Stay with us. Some unholy politics again over the holy cow. The center's new notification banning cattle slaughter has set off protests in several non-NDA rule states from Kerala to Karnataka to Tamil Nadu to Meghalaya and now West Bengal. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee was the latest to join in the chorus. She is calling the center fascist and communal. She says the ban is time to coincide with the holy month of Ramazan. The first major backlash 
against the Modi government's decision to ban sale of cattle for slaughter, and it's a controversial one, a case has been filed now against Youth Congress workers for allegedly slaughtering an ox in Kanu. They made their point, but their own party wasn't pleased. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi tweeted to say, What happened in Kerala yesterday is thoughtless, barbaric and completely unacceptable to me and the Congress party. I strongly condemn the incident. Here is a man whose Congress workers have done something this, which is not, it is deplorable, it's barbaric, you're not supposed to be, uh, I mean, even I'm from Kerala, but you cannot uh, slaughter animals in public. Nobody does that. It's a crime anyway. And he's condemned it and suspended them, not just condemned, but suspended and said this should not ever happen again. He's given a very strong message. It comes from the top. But passions are running high in Kerala against the cattle slaughter ban. The chief minister himself has lashed out at the centre. The centre's order should be taken back without any delay. The centre should not be stubborn over the issue, otherwise the situation might take a grim turn. Backing the Kerala CM is Karnataka's chief minister as well, who saw no problem in the Kanur slaughter. I think he's right. But we are examining, you are not yet received the orders issued by the government of India. Mm. After we received, we will examine uh, constitutionally whether government of the orders issued by the government of India is binding on, on the states or not. So, you, youth it. Congress activists, they have butchered an ox publicly to protest about it. Do you think this is the right way to protest? No, no, protest, it is their right. We are neither accepting or we are not bound to abide by these two rules. In Delhi, the Congress may be trying to distance itself from cattle slaughter politics, but the beef battle has big political implications in the South that no party can afford to ignore. I think that this decision taken by the government is, uh, is, does not stand on solid ground because uh, first it's against our constitutional right because we have the right to eat what we want. Another thing which really bothers me is the timing in which uh, how this has come because the holy Ramzan month has started now and uh, as we know it the Muslims are the principal consumers of beef other than uh, Kerala. Considering that a right wing party uh, pushing it, certainly there is some politics to it. Similar views are being voiced in IIT Madras as well, where students held a beef festival on Sunday night in solidarity with other protesters across South India. With South India on the boil over the cattle slaughter ban, has the centre bitten off more than it can chew? And facing the backlash, the centre now says the Environment Ministry notification is under review, also specifying that this is a regulation not a ban. What's the difference? We'll put that to uh, uh, the BJP spokesperson who is joining us on the show, Sudhanshu Mittal. But before that, listen in to what Venkaya Naidu has told Maria Shakil. What was the need for your government to go for nationwide ban on cow slaughter? You know, I, I, I hope that you people, media, people follow what is happening. It is a Supreme Court order to regulate cattle traffic that has been done. There was a notification that has been issued. Yes. Sir by environment ministry after the Supreme Court's directive. What will happen to the legal abattoirs then, sir? No, they can act it. You see, let someone challenge it legally, it will be tested. But don't you think impact the export? No, no, you see, all these things will the be taken care of. First of all, impacted. it is being regulated, that's all. Nothing more than that. Nothing is banned. Something that is impacting the image of the government. This is about cow vigilantism, sir. No, no, that's not government program. And the government is very clear, no less than a Prime Minister, Prime Minister himself said that cow production is fine, but at the same time human protection is more, also equally, if not more important. And that means it is for the state and law enforcing agency to take action with the people, whoever takes law into their hands. This is neither a BJP program nor a government program. Many people in this country adore cow, so let us protect it. But at the same time, in the name of protecting cow, you cannot uh, act against uh, uh, fellow human beings and then uh, take law into your hands. That's the line of the government. Very clear. The Prime Minister himself spoke about it. 
And as protests take place in several states, the cow slaughter ban now emerging as the new flashpoint between the center and the state. Joining us now, Sudhan Mittal is the leader of the BJP. P. Rajiv is the former member of parliament of the CPIM. And Baisakhi Banerjee is a TMC sympathizer. Baisakhi, I'm coming to you first. Uh, you may criticize the ban by saying that it is not the right thing to do, but why give it a communal tinge? See, uh, what we feel uh, from Trinamool Congress is this kind of prohibition is actually an attempt to polarize um, the, the kind of uh, politics of polarization BJP has been playing all through. So this is just another manifestation of that. Uh, what they are saying that this is a regulation and uh, not a ban, this is far more hypocritical because uh, what they are trying to do through this regulation, they are trying to ban slaughter, mm -hmm. they are trying to stop slaughtering and at the same time they are saying no, we are not banning the thing, okay. we are actually regulating the thing. Okay. Whatever is coming within the state schedule, the state list, why is the center bulldozing the state's power? Beshaki, that good is what question. is most good undemocratic. Question. Good question, Beshaki, and I'm going to let Sudhanshu Mittal of the BJP answer that question. The charge against the BJP is simple, Mr. Mittal, this evening. This is politics of polarization. This is against the principles of federalism and secularism. Respond to that, sir. Huh. Mr. Mittal, can you hear me? Good evening. Mr. Mittal, can you hear me? Good evening. Can I ask you a question? Okay. All right, I think Mr. Mittal is speaking to someone on the phone. We'll try and get him off the phone and onto the show. Uh, but let's get in a left view in. Former MP from the CPIM, P. Rajiv, is with us. Uh, Mr. Rajiv, what is your principal disagreement with the way the center has gone about this ban? And this is a ban. You know, the government can call it what it wants to, but this is a ban, an effective beef ban from the backdrop, from the back door. What's your principal opposition to it? Actually, this is de facto a ban. Uh, they are arguing that it is only regulation, but it is de facto a ban. This is against the secular principles of the country. It is constitutionally it is wrong, and it is against the parent, uh, against the scope of the Parent Act. I heard something uh, mentioned by some of the panelists that it is against the federal principles. That is true. Actually, the protection of the livestock is under the state list. Yes. Uh, only the cruelty of the animals, it has come under the concurrent list. Now this uh, central government is uh, uh, crossing their borders and uh, taking the powers of the state government. The right. second important thing, this rules actually goes beyond the scope of the Parent Act. That is the main thing. This is ultra ways to the Parent Act. This Parent Act 1960 clearly permits the killing of cow or any animal for the food of mankind that is specifically stated in the section 11 of this act of the 1960 act that act allows the slaughter of the cows uh, for the food of the human being and also it is mentioning the slaughterhouses but in these rules we cannot see anywhere in this entire notification lot of questions the about the notification right we could not see any way in the parent a lot of questions about the nature of this uh, notification. Let me let me get Sudhanshu Mittal now. Sudhanshu Mittal, is this your definition of what the Prime Minister says is cooperative federalism? When you are encroaching on what is the subject in the state list, shouldn't the centre have taken states on board before going for this nationwide notification, which you are saying is just regulation, not a ban? Firstly, Maria Ji, the allegation that it is encroaching upon the rights of the state is completely ill-founded, mm. completely political in nature, devoid of merit, and must be rejected lock, stock and barrel. Mr. Mittal, the, the, the allegation is this is your way finish. of politics of polarization. Yeah, I am just coming down to that. I just heard... Uh, Mr. Rajiv talking about this being against the secular characteristics of this country and the constitution. Mr. Rajiv, your own former ally of Congress with whom you are still hobnobbing on the issue of president was responsible for a cow slaughter ban across the country. If that was not uh, communal, 
तो आप मिस्टर मित्तल दैट वाज नॉट इफेक्टिंग दी वेरी गुड मिस्टर मित्तल सो सो मिस्टर मित्तल सो आर यू एक्सेप्टिंग दैट दिस इज अ काउ स्लॉटर बैन अक्रॉस द कंट्री आह मतलब इट कैन बी कॉल्ड अ नोटिफिकेशन अ रूल व्हाटेवर बट यू आर एक्सेप्टिंग दैट दिस इज अ काउ स्लॉटर बैन अक्रॉस द कंट्री आई एम मेली आर्टिकुलेटिंग हिस डेफिनेशन ऑफ सेकुलरिज्म दैट दिस बैन इज अगेंस्ट दिस सेकुलरिज्म ऑफ दिस कंट्री आई सेड हे वाज द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ कांग्रेस विद हुम दे आर नाउ इन पार्टनरशिप व्हिच एक्चुअली बैन काउ स्लॉटर but so that was secular but this is communal i mean it is a perverse definition of communalism is what i want to bring to your notice no but but and sir these are regulations and if they are ultra virus the constitution or if they are illegal let me tell you one thing none of these would be uh, crying foul they will be rushing to the courts to take a stay order on that No, no, so sir. We have acted well within the rights. No, yeah. but how have you acted right. within the rights, Mr. Mittal? If you have encroached on what is we, a clearly a state subject, you know my question. You no, have not really is, answered. This, this, shouldn't the centre have gone and taken consent from states? Because if you, why not make it a part of concurrent list? That is not part of the concurrent list. It's we, part of the state list. This is when you are making regulations under the Act. Then those regulations are not required to be. Conquered by the states, so the premise that we should have taken the concurrence of the state to do this is is a fallacious premise, which is not a legally sound premise. Maybe, maybe, Mr. As far as okay, Mr. 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 If 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 we Mr. 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 Maybe finish, you should have asked, finish. if not the opposition, maybe you should have asked members of your own party in the northeast in Meghalaya. Already, your leaders are saying we are not going to implement this ban. Even in so, Kerala, yes, even in Kerala. So maybe you should have spoken to your your own party members. Leave alone opposition. As, Mr. as I said, Megha, <laughs> see, Mr. as Mr. far as Meghalaya is concerned, Meg, uh, can I just finish? Okay. Meghalaya is not a part of BJP's uh, ruling domain. So if Mayor Galia is saying they will not, then don't blame BJP for that. And if Kerala says it will not, then law will take its own course. Okay. I am not. You see, there is a constitution, there is a law. Hmm. If if a government is defined to a law, let law find its own solution. You know, sir. At we times, we have done what we were required to do under the under the regulations which had okay. to be framed. All right. We have done something which is perfectly legal and justified. Right. Now, if people have a problem with that. Well, either they should go, and if they are defined to a law, then I'm sure the law sir, knows you know, how the to take care of people who are defined to a law. So the question is also: so the question is, shouldn't the centre have taken states on board? That is one question that you Why? have not answered. So, Anju Mittal, we'll have to really end no, on this note. It's not required to. We'll have to really end on this note. Sudanshu Mittal, P. Rajiv of the CPIM and Baisakhi Banerjee of the TMC, thanks so much for joining us. And you know, Shreya, one wonders if the BJP perhaps is disconnected as to really what is the purpose of the cow and the buffaloes. It's not for beef. It's for dairy products. It is also for plowing the fields. And when they, the only thing that seems to be capturing the idea is about buffaloes and be, buffaloes being used for beef purpose. which is essentially means when only when they become non productive that they have a value as beef so on that note this is a debate of course that is not ending here it continues at 9 pm this evening as well but for the moment we are slipping into a quick break on the show on the other side some horrifying pictures from bengaluru this is where the varthur lake is again frothing over do stay with us for that toxic froth is back in bangaluru lakes again this time it is the warthol lake that is frothing over we have seen lakes on fire we have seen thousands of dead fish floating on the surface of the lakes but looks like authorities are yet, yet to come up with any sort of substantial plan to control this pollution these pictures horrifying pictures from bengaluru's dying lakes it's something to think about this evening maria and i will be back tomorrow evening same time at 7 pm for the moment it's a wrap from us arunda mukherjee right here on cnn news 18 in the next 4 minutes thanks so much for watching